very warm welcome to this Wednesday worship. My name is Maria Williams and I'm a worship leader in the Falmouth and Gwennett Methodist Circuit. A prayer as we come together to dedicate this act of worship. Father, we come to you with empty hands to receive from you. We come with every heart so that you might carry our burden. We come with our self-satisfaction that you might open our eyes to meet the needs of others. We come with our self-centeredness that you may deal with our deafness to the cries of our neighbour. We come with our hopes and our fears, our joys and our sorrows. We come as we are, longing to be made new. We come in the name of Jesus, because he came first. Amen. Over the last few months, we've all experienced our lives being turned upside down by the coronavirus pandemic. We're now into the third national lockdown and unlike the previous lockdowns, there are those that are still not complying or bending the rules, which is making life so much more dangerous and difficult for their fellow human beings. Any compassion or thought for the safety and care of others has been selfishly disregarded. Many of us have been isolating in our homes or communities for endless days, weeks and months at a time now. Particularly those who are vulnerable, in care and those shielding. Our usual contacts and support networks with those we know and love have been limited or non-existent. Many people, including children, are experiencing loneliness, isolation, mental or physical health issues, or even a sense of abandonment. It doesn't matter who we are or what our circumstances are, we all function so much better with human love and kindness. For those that haven't been able to get out and about within government guidelines, other ways of having contact with people have been a lifeline. Telephone calls, cards and messages via the post, social media, emails, Zoom meetings and other social media type calls or messages have all provided much needed contact with each other. Even a socially distanced knock on the door to see if a person is okay or needs any assistance has been greatly appreciated. Small acts of kindness and generosity make a huge difference to a person's life and ability to be able to cope. We all need contact as human beings. We need to have been shown love and care, kindness, respect and appreciation. We need contact with one another. God is very much aware of our needs and has not abandoned us. He is with us always. Some people may even have got to know their neighbours and those in the local communities slightly better because of the ongoing world crisis. Last year, Clap for Carers certainly brought neighbourhoods and communities closer together. There was a shared sense of belonging to a bigger purpose. More people locally have been out and about on foot. It's been so uplifting to share a socially distanced few words with those around us when getting out for our daily exercise. But to be able to communicate effectively with others, we have to have that love within ourselves to be able to reach out and love those strangers around us. That is not something that comes easy with unfamiliar faces, but a kind word will often break down many barriers. In Leviticus, God reminded the Israelites that they knew how it felt to be strangers and how to treat others. God had set them apart to be his own nation and in return they were to bless their neighbours by loving them as themselves. We're instructed by God to love one another because he loved us first. Our Christian discipleship begins with God's overwhelming love for us, expressed in creation and in Jesus' life, death and resurrection. We love God because he first loved us. 
So how are we to respond to so great a love? Our Christian faith must be at the heart and not just at the edges of our lives. When Jesus was teaching, he was often challenged. A short passage of scripture from Matthew's Gospel. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. If you saw the recent online service with Richard Courtney and Deacon Jane Mills, it came across very clearly that no matter how hard it may be, we have to love each other as we love ourselves. God is instructing us clearly to treat others as we ourselves would like to be treated. We have to be able to love ourselves to be able to show the love of Christ through ourselves to others. Richard emphasised that it's not about liking another person, it's about loving them as God loves us. Jesus showed compassion. He didn't marginalise people. As human beings, we come in all shapes and sizes, different colours, different cultural backgrounds, different life experiences, different health and social needs. We are called to love our neighbour as God loves us. Through us, God's Holy Spirit will flow for his purpose to shape our lives and those lives around us. Again, our Christian faith must be at the heart and not just at the edges of our lives. Reverend Liz Harris has been leading an online Bible study on a Monday afternoon looking at a Methodist way of life with the Stidian's church family. The calling of the Methodist Church is to respond to the gospel of God's love in Christ and live out its discipleship in worship and mission. Its aim is, as far as we're able with God's help, we're called to worship, learning and caring, service and evangelism. Those are tough commitments and as a group, we've been exploring our own responses to those commitments. During lockdown and this time of socially distancing, our Christian ministry has been challenged to think outside the box and to do things differently. That doesn't mean that we have to give up doing all things that are normally church. We just have to find a different approach to sharing and caring for each other. Last week we were discussing learning and caring. We spoke and shared about the challenge to care for ourselves and those around us. It's difficult at present to practice hospitality and generosity, but we can still carry out pastoral care in different ways. We can still donate to food banks. We can still meet the needs of others in other ways like shopping or collecting medication. And I'm sure there are other permitted tasks at this present time. There is also, of course, financial giving and many more ways of showing our love for each other in small acts of kindness and generosity. Even at times such as now, we can make a difference to other people's lives. Reaching out in love, sharing and caring or just simply being a voice on the end of a telephone, supporting and holding someone else in God's love can make such a big difference to someone's life. From John's Gospel, chapter 13, verses 34 to 35. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Faith begins with God's love for us and our love for him in response. But it cannot end there, for whoever our neighbour is in need, God is in need too. So let's reach out in some small way and share God's love 
with someone today. Let's pray. Lord, teach us to reach out to this troubled, divided world, recognising the call of our neighbour in the cry of the needy. Teach us what it means to belong, not just to the community of faith, but to the family of humankind. And in serving each other, there we may serve you also, to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for sharing with me today. When I needed a neighbour, were you there? Were you there? When I needed a neighbour, were you there? And the creed and the colour and the name won't matter, were you there? I was hungry and thirsty, were you there? Were you there? I was hungry and thirsty, were you there? And the creed and the colour and the name won't matter, were you there? I was cold, I was naked, were you there, were you there? I was cold, I was naked, were you there? And the creed and the colour and the name won't matter, were you there? When I need a shelter were you there were you there when i needed a shelter were you there and the creed and the color and the name won't matter were you there won't matter when i needed a healer were you there were you there when i needed a healer were you there and the creed and the colour and the name was matter when the name was matter wherever you travel I'll be there I'll be there wherever you travel I'll be there and the creed and the colour and the name was matter I'll be there.